Hello and welcome to PFF Fantasy Football Podcast. I'm your host, Ian Harditz, and today we continue our fantasy final series with a look at Christian McCaffrey, Mr. 1.01. He's been my pick for 1.01 each of the last two years, and he is the consensus pick for a third straight season in fantasy football. And I do love how running backs in real life, particularly by my employer, tend to get slandered. But we have our glorious American pastime known as fantasy football, where these football players can get the due they deserve. Look, when you're growing up, where's the best kid usually play? If not quarterback, it's running back. In high school, same thing. In college, does Nick Saban recruit anyone other than the best possible running back to come get the rock? Of course not. Running backs matter in the game of football because they touch the ball freaking 20, 30 times a game, at least an entire backfield does obviously the position matters where it doesn't necessarily matter as much is in the nfl's rather arbitrary salary cap system people i've complained about this plenty of times i don't want to waste another you know i could go on for probably an hour here i don't want to waste too much time going on about the salary cap just realize the whole idea statement that running backs don't matter only applies to the nfl salary cap because then okay if we have to look at all 22 positions and say where could we maybe save some money and maybe get more out of that position based on improving other people around them yes it's running back more dependent on the line the quarterback i understand why teams save just realize that if we still have a hierarchy of running backs, I wish there wasn't a salary cap. So the best running back in the world could make whatever the employer wants to pay the best running back in the world. So all this as an intro, just to say Christian McCaffrey is objectively a fantastic professional and fantasy football player. Number eight, overall pick from the 2017 draft. Really all we've seen the guy do since he got in the league is ball out. And I know his first year, there are actually some concerns about how great of a rusher can this guy be, you know, not the biggest uh, guy in the world and just going between the tackles. It seemed like it was a little bit of an issue at first, hardly the first rookie running back to go through these things, but didn't even impact them in terms of fantasy. In 2017, McCaffrey was the overall PPR RB nine as a rookie. That was despite some of those aforementioned rushing struggles in 2018. He was the overall RB two Saquon beat him by an entire 0. 0.6 uh, PPR point 2019 overall RB one in 2020. Okay, he finished as the RB54. As we know, fantasy points per game, usually a better indicator. And in that year, and that year being 2020, McCaffrey literally averaged more PPR points than he did in 2019. 30.11 versus 29.5, just three games. Absolute madness. I know I'm cheating a little bit trying to compare, you know, three games to 16. Just realize the brief time we saw McCaffrey in 2020, he looked literally better than ever. And the evidence uh, backs that up in terms of just PPR points per game. So McCaffrey has been the PPR God. And as we talk about on this podcast from time to time, the two main cheat codes that we look for in fantasy football are receiving running backs and mobile QBs. McCaffrey checks that first box with more flying colors than literally anybody. I mean, McCaffrey in his career, he is responsible for 40% of all running back seasons ever that included triple digit receptions. I mean, he holds the top two marks in NFL history and single season receptions. Like we just haven't ever seen a player like McCaffrey get this sort of workload as a receiver. And sometimes it was even comical. I mean, in 2019, they were pushing so hard for McCaffrey to get over a thousand yards rushing and a thousand yards receiving on a bad Panthers team. It was this meaningless week 17 game against the Saints. Yeah, against the Saints, where they pulled him out of the game, you know, 51 snaps in, you know, his usual workload, but not before they were just feeding him in the midst of an eventual 42 to 10 loss. So I get it. A little bit of McCaffrey's, uh, you know, production has been of the stat padding variety from time to time, but, you know, you don't freaking gain. Over let's see what, what he had that year 2392 yards and score 19 times by being anything other than a bad football player and you know what in fantasy land we don't care about style points we don't care how the yards and touchdowns get there we just care that they do eventually and the fact that McCaffrey has continued to get these yards and touchdowns without the benefit of a legit high-end offense even more impressive and that's really to me, that creates this part here because with a lot of guys, you know, running backs in particular, we always talk about the O-line, the scoring environment and all that. And McCaffrey's never had a good, you know, environment around him. 2017, the Panthers had the 12th ranked scoring offense, 19th highest graded offensive line and run blocking per PFF. 2018, 14th ranked scoring offense, 29th ranked offensive line. 2019, 20th ranked scoring offense, 19th ranked offensive line. Most recently in 2020, 24th ranked scoring offense, 19th highest graded offensive line and run blocking. I mean, from injured Cam Newton to Teddy Bridgewater to Kyle Allen, 
I guess that order was actually reversed chronologically, but you know what I'm saying? Now we're going to have Sam freaking Darnold, who I've already slandered enough here on this podcast and don't need to get into it. Just realize we're once again, looking at a Panthers offense that, you know, isn't going to be above average. Is that fair to say to all you Darnold stands out there? Not going to be above average in the offensive lines. Again, looking bad, actually going in this year, PFF ranks the Panthers as a 31st ranked unit, noting the Panthers have three offensive line positions with projected starters who have a history of below average play. And that's a big concern unless their younger players step up again, though, people, we just don't necessarily care about the uh, offensive line play. And it just doesn't matter when we have someone like Christian McCaffrey getting the receptions in 2020, the top five PFF offensive lines in Rome blocking grade produced four top 24 PPRBs, the top five bottom, uh, excuse me, the bottom five offensive lines also produced four top 24 PPRBs. We had Austin Eckler, Miles Gaskin emerging from that group. Thanks to their receiving roles. Luckily McCaffrey has that in spades. So once again, we're looking at McCaffrey in a below average offense with the below average offensive line. And it just doesn't matter because the opportunity here is absolutely ridiculous. People I've mentioned on these pods, you know, I have my kind of PFF expected fancy point opportunity score thing I got going on. Essentially in 2020, a target was worth about 2.5 carries in terms of projected PPR points and taking our 2021 PFF projections and just applying that model. McCaffrey is the number one running back in the entire league in his projected opportunity takes us to our PFF Lily stat for McCaffrey. And that is how McCaffrey at this moment in time, he holds the top mark among all running backs to ever play the game in PPR points per game. Only other players with at least tw- uh, above the 20 point threat Threshold, Alvin Kamara, Jim Brown, Saquon Barkley, and Lindanian Tomlinson. And also, just kind of quick side note, I lied. There's one more guy in that group. Antonio Williams, Buffalo Bills uh, running back. He played one game. This guy has played one game. He had two touchdowns, 63 rushing yards, chipped in a 20-yard reception. And now on all these all-time leaderboards, we have these legends of the game where, you know, consensus top three uh, overall, you know, fantasy picks. And then Little known Antonio Williams out of North Carolina. Here's to hoping Antonio can keep that pace, join the likes of Jim Brown, Alvin Kamara, and Christian McCaffrey there in the historical uh, Terry, whatever the hell I'm trying to say. Anyway, Christian McCaffrey, third rank. As you know, he is the RB1. Y'all, uh, again, has the expected fantasy opportunity. And just there's no concern with him even having a new quarterback because we've already had offensive coordinator Joe Brady say his mindset is unchanged on McCaffrey's role. And that role is the single most fantasy friendly role in fantasy football. If someone created a footballer in the lab that they want to score the most fantasy points possible, it would be Christian McCaffrey. They just feed him the ball as much as humanly possible. Last year, he had a 97% snap rate in week one in two more games, which he was playing th- through ankle and then shoulder injuries. So these were injury impacted games. He got 64 and 71% snap rates with 22 and 28 touches in those contests. So if anything, you know, we saw the receptions a little bit lower than normal, but they were still on a blistering pace and his overall 16 game pace for touches last season was 405, which was actually a notch up from his 403 touch campaign from 2019. So draft McCaffrey number one, overall again in 2021 in full and half point uh, per reception scorings, even standard. I mean, he has a case uh, to be that guy. So just turned 25 in June, M- maybe you're riding the injury prone wave. It seems like nobody is for McCaffrey. He shouldn't be. You shouldn't be doing it for almost anybody. Didn't miss a game his first three seasons in the league. So McCaffrey, keep on going to the bank. We are, again, looking at, for now, the single best running back that the fantasy football world has ever seen. Uh, beyond him, you know, we obviously we have Mike Davis, friend of the PFF Fantasy Podcast, uh, took his talents to Atlanta, so it's less of a clear situation than normal. I'm not really buying the Chuba Hubbard hype. I'm just not all that convinced that he is, uh, you know, how kind of some pass-catching chops to uh, be, a three down guy. If McCaffrey unfortunately suffers another injury, he only caught eight passes during his final season at Oklahoma state. And when I was doing some pre-draft studying, I mean, this was a guy where he had more yards after the catch than actual receiving yards. That's great. He can catch screens and move along. I'm just not necessarily sold on him being someone that can, you know, displace Reggie Bonifon, Trent Cannon, whoever else are going to have out there. If McCaffrey gets hurt, even last year, Mike Davis, as many touches as he got, we didn't see him have the true, 
90% plus Christian McCaffrey snap roll. He was getting the targets and stuff, and that was great. I'm not so sure Chuba gets that. I would say if McCaffrey gets hurt, I would expect Chuba to be the number one running back there, but I think it'd be more of a committee, 50, 60% snaps, maybe 15 combined carries and targets per game. Even that seems a little bit like wishful thinking. I think Chuba would generally settle in as more of a low-end RB2, RB3 without McCaffrey. I would say more RB3. I, I see Chuba rising up the ranks, you know, and hey, he's not the worst dart throw handcuff in the world. It could work out that way. At least we know Joe Brady is someone that's willing to give a backup like a Mike Davis, maybe like a Chuba Hubbard, uh, you know, enough touches to emerge as a fantasy RB1. I just think there's better, more proven uh, commodities out there in that running back landscape. So mostly fading the Chuba hype, but yeah, give me CMC at 101. Thank you, as always, for tuning in to PFF Fantasy Podcast. Everyone, new episodes every single day throughout the summer. And if you enjoyed the show, I invite you to please check out PFS Podcast Network, which covers everything NFL, college, and fantasy football. You can recap the NFL draft with Mike Renner and Austin Gales, two from one drafts podcast, or get all 2021 betting content you need with the PFF forecast. Also, I invite you to go over to Underdog Fantasy when you want to play best ball, which is a season long game where you draft a team like you normally do. But that's it. There's no in season roster management. Underdog automatically selects, selects your best performers each week, saving you loads of time. Time. Go to Underdog Fantasy and deposit ten dollars using promo code PFF and get a free PFF Edge annual subscription. That's promo code PFF Draft now at Underdog Fantasy. Happen to be back in Columbus, Ohio. People, I was gone in New York last three weeks. Spent last week out, uh, Long Beach Island getting my tan on. Not really. I'm still pale as a freaking ghost, but I try. You know, this year maybe maybe this is the year. Uh, but yeah, it was funny. I was driving back home uh, yesterday. Nice little nine hour drive from uh, New York or L Long Beach Island, I should say, to uh, uh, Columbus. And I stopped in Pennsylvania. I had just driven my six hour shift. My girlfriend was going to take over for the last three. Wanted to watch. UFC fights and uh, I get the phone out, stop by, switch cars at a gas station. I am so sick and tired of these East Coast states having the most absurd gas station laws ever in regards to alcohol. They say you can't buy beer at these places. And I'm not just zeroing in on Pennsylvania. Maybe I just went to the wrong gas station in Pennsylvania, but they had this when I lived in Connecticut. I've seen it in other states around there. And, you know, it wasn't even a Sunday. This was on a Saturday. So we don't even have the age old religious law doing it. I really don't understand why these places still have these anti anti alcohol laws. Are you trying to clean it up? Because usually you go to these gas stations that have these types of laws and they turn to a freaking head shop with, you know, water pipes and whatever you want to call them everywhere like that. So I, I don't know people, but if I am ever governor of a state, which I have no desire to ever be. The first thing I will do is remove all these arbitrary and absurd alcohol laws that have no business being in the year 2021. So glad I can get that off my chest. Thank you as always for tuning in to PFF fantasy football podcast. Uh, again, new episodes every single day. Also invite you to check out my corresponding hundred articles in a hundred uh, days, fantasy football question series over at PFF.com. So I'm Ian Hart. It's until next time. Take care, everybody.